No, so well. After the break, Bob Mills in bed with me dinner. I'll tell you where I've been. I went out last night. Right? I went out with my mate Gaza, right? Uh, me and him went out, and we went out. He said, come out and have something to eat and something to drink. So we went out, and then we had something to eat, right? And then we went out to drink. Uh, and then we went out and had something to eat. And then we went out and had some more drinks. <laughs> and then we went out and had something to eat. And then we had four more drinks. And I think we went out and had something to eat. And then we did something a bit weird, because then we went and had something more to eat somewhere else. And I said we were supposed to go out and have a drink before we went and had something else to eat. So then we had to have two drinks to make up for the drink that we'd never had in the first place. Anyway, I've got some stuff to show you. Uh, what is it? That, I can't read my own writing. Yeah. There are a lot of people, you know, a lot of people now in television, uh, they use, like, oh, they have a, this is absolutely true, they have a big camera with the words on the front, but professionals, real professionals, like me and Bob Greaves, people like that, <laughs> we just, like, get your gas bill, write some stuff down it, and then you can read it as you're going along. That's easy. It's much, much, much the better way to do it, I always think. Uh, what have I got in... Oh, here, yeah, look. I've got these. Right, look at this. Fantastic. I discovered these, right? Uh, made by uh, HP, look. Healthy beans. That's fa no, that's fantastic. They're not like normal beans. Don't you go thinking that they've just got some normal baked beans and written the word healthy on the front of the tin, because they haven't. They're healthy beans. Like that. So if I have people come round, I'll give them them, right? Unless I have Welsh people come in, in which case I'll just give them them. I don't mind. <laughs> they don't taste them, they just eat them far end of meals. So <laughs> what else have I got in here? Oh, I've got some screed. Look at that. Great big bag of screed. There must be five pounds of screed in there. OK, I'll tell you what we'll do later. Right, not now, seriously, but later, we'll get together, we'll have a couple of snowballs, cos I'm a bugger for a snowball, and I'll dish out the screed. Look at it, look. Beautiful, beautiful stuff, screed. Uh, I'll go down the store, down Wharf Road, and I'll get, like, five pounds, and I'll eat that. Just, just with a spoon, you can just eat it. If I'm not mad on it. I just eat it, I can take it or leave it. But some people, they will put screed before anything. But especially, like, a lot of people who run pubs, right? They get mad for screed. It's very big with the licensed victors. And they will, they will neglect other things just to get screed. And here's the other thing I've got, right? A lot of my mates come round, right? I tell you, Aidan Quinn comes round a lot. Sean Penn, Brad Pitt. They come round and I like to have them, but they always eat my popcorn. I get a big bag of popcorn, put a film on, and they eat my popcorn. So what I've done, I've, got, I've done a deal with a little firm, and I've had this made, right? Look. And this is Bobby's popcorn. <laughs> No mistake there, so Brad Pitt will go, Hey man, I want to eat some... Oh, better not, it's Bobby's. <laughs> if he spoke like that. Oh, there you go, that's that. Uh, oh, here's the other thing from me microwave. Fantastic thing I've discovered. Look, you get a picture of him, right? Here he is, see him? Britain's uh, leading uh, Formula One racing commentator. And then you get a picture of him, right? My very, very good friend Julian, right? Who walks in a particular way, right? You take them, you put them in there, there you go. Beep, 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 beep. Start. Bing! And you wind up with this, look. Murray Mince. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's lovely, that is. So, I, might, oh, I was going to have a bit of screed, but no. Get on with your work. That's more important. Don't put screed before everything else. Um, oh, this is nice. This is a new film I've got coming out. Uh, it's what it is. Is I die, right? Uh, and then my old woman, she loves me so much, she thinks she can see me. And then Whoopi Goldberg comes and says, yeah, he's still here. Look, there I am there. In the movie Ghost. That's <laughs> Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, uh, and, and these books here, I'll tell you who's given me these, right? Antonio Banderas. It's a little bit weird. 
He's a nice lad, but he comes out and he goes like, Hey, Bob, I have for you now. Beautiful book, innit? Right? If he's fine like that. Uh, this is the book that he's given me. He says, you must read it. It's a, beautiful, it's a fantastic book. The Faint Around with Performing Series. <laughs> If you see him, tell him I read it and I thought it was really good. <laughs> and here's the other one. Hey, Bob, this is a fantastic book. If only they could talk. <laughs> what would be the point? What would be the point of a seal cut learning to talk? Going through all that process of learning to talk, when the only phrase it needs is, could you not do that? <laughs> I'll tell you what, you're very lucky to find me in to slave a bit more screed. No, I'll leave it. Because uh, normally, this time of night, I'd be uh, out and about. I can't go home, right? This is how bad it's got. I can't even go into my flat because I have so much trouble with birds, right? They come round my flat, these birds, and they're, like, looking in, looking in my window like that. I have to sleep round my mate's house because there's too many birds around my flat for me to go home. Look, there they are. <laughs> I was going to play, uh, actually, I was, I was going to play, and I will play in a minute, uh, a tape I made uh, about when I was out with the police in, uh, in Cardiff. But before I do that, right, this is, this is my favourite thing just at the moment. If you have, uh, in, on, in television, you don't see it when you're watching at home, right? But in the studio, they have a clock, right? It's so that everyone knows what the programme is. It's like in the movies, they have a clapperboard, and in this, they have a clock. Uh, this program called How to Stay Alive. It was made, I believe, by London Weekend Television. <laughs> and a guy will read that so that they have a visual and uh, uh, an oral. Is oral the word I'm looking for? Whatever. Or is that something you paid ten pounds? No. All right. <laughs> they will have versions so that they'll have a record of exactly what it is that's on, on the piece of film you're about to watch. This is what you would get under normal circumstances. How to Stay Alive, production number 33173. Data recording 2478. Take one. Couldn't be simpler. Just get the facts over. Up north, right, in Granada, they used to have a problem because it, what they would, they would get was out at Still Ave, production number 33173, Jack recorded 247781. Now, if that comes down to south, no one can understand what they're saying. So they sent the people who did this, they sent them on, on the elocution lessons at Eton School. Seriously, and this is what they sound like now up north at Granada. Hey neighbor, P1056, <laughs> program one, take one. <laughs> Try. How lovely. <laughs> Please watch our program, I think you'll enjoy it very, very much, I really do. But funny enough, that program, Hey Neighbor, uh, you know who presented that, don't you? My old mate Bob, Bob Greaves. And he's the man who taught me everything I know about appearing on television. He was the man, for instance, who said to me, those big cameras with the words on them, don't get involved with them, they're rubbish. Just, you know, just get your gas bill. Simple as that. Hello, this is the first of two special programmes called Hey Neighbour. Our Good Neighbours series has ended now, so tonight we thought we'd take a look not just at one individual who goes out of their way to help somebody else, but this time at a scheme that has gathered together no fewer than 300 Good Neighbours. You see, there you go, just whip it down on your gas bill. That's fine. Why spend all that money when people don't mind seeing your script in front of you? That's Bob's philosophy, and I'll go for it 100%. Now, up to Cardiff now, as I tell you, I went to Cardiff, and I went there to, to go around with the police and make a programme with them, which I do a lot of, because, as I say, uh, I am an honorary member of most constabularies in this country. Uh, and this is one uh, in particular, and it starts off with the, one of the top honchos in the police uh, having a little chat about the way things work. Basically, I want to deal with this as quickly as possible, uh, make sure that uh, if anyone has to be arrested, they're arrested quickly, efficiently, and removed away from the scene so that the, any fracas that's occurred uh, is very quickly quelled. Very quickly quelled. <laughs> uh, aren't, aren't they sweets you get if you've got a cough? Can I have some quickly quelled? <laughs> but I'll tell you a problem they do have. That's a problem they do have with screed. A big problem with no, because what they do in Cardiff is they go down, they buy a load, and they're so busy, they've got to stay, they go to any lengths to get the money to buy screed with. It's, it's a terrible problem down there. 
Certain members of the licence and trade are very responsible, but unfortunately, I, my personal opinion is that most brewers and most club proprietors put greed before need. <laughs> Told ya. You see? It's a big problem all over the country, but especially in the principality, I think you'll find. Uh, now then, what he was saying earlier on was about uh, arresting people. You have to arrest somebody, arrest somebody quickly uh, and get them away before there's a fracas. But uh, any police uh, uh, const uh, constabulary will tell you this. They don't want to arrest people. Firstly and foremost, just talk to people. All right. Here's an example. This is from another. This is somewhere in the home counties where I made a film. And this is how, this is the correct way of approaching somebody. You see somebody on the street, you're not sure whether someone's going to be a miss or not. This is the correct way of, of, of dealing with the situation. They're just for us, don't worry about them. Eddie, hey, you feel on your talk? What have you got on there? I've got a Come here, Elliot, we'll just have a quick chat. Have you got anything? All right, they've established first name terms. Elliot, you come over here with me. Uh, and my colleague will talk to your friend here, all very good-natured. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some good channel. You got any knives, the nails and all that, yeah? Got any knives on you? Is this legal? Is that legal? Yeah, I got a knife. Lovely. Is there anything you've got? That's a bit, that's a lovely. Right. Oh, keep hold of that, mate. Do you mind if I just keep hold of the knife a second while I question you? <laughs> you, might, you don't mind me disarming you, do you? Is that all right? <laughs> if, you, uh, if you've got a problem, put it in writing, please, and we'll be happy to deal with it. But I'll just keep the knife for now, if that's no problem. Oh, please, sir. That's right. There we go. But the needles are snapped off, are they? Yeah, they are. Thanks. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, I've dropped one of your needles that you obviously keep just because you're diabetic. That's no problem. I'll pick that up for you. That's all yeah, right. Yeah, okay, mate. Sorry about that. You're right. Yeah, I'll give. Here's your needle. Have it back. No. This one's yours, though. Yeah, lovely so dog. Been 10 years now. It's devoted. Okay, see you later. There you go. Lovely, nice to see you. Lovely dog. Here, here's a can of special brew for you. <laughs> Not just any can of special, 13 and a half percent extra. You can, that's a little gift from us down at the station. Everything's fine. That is how you question people, all right? In Cardiff, however, they've got a slightly different take on things. Right, a taxi driver claims his car has been attacked. He calls the police for help, and he, say, he says, it's just his word, I need a taxi driver, my car has been attacked. So obviously what they're going to do is just have a chat with anyone who's around, see if anyone knows anything about it. The one crossing the road? The one crossing the road. Mm -hmm. right. right, it was the gentleman crossing the road, is it? Right, we'll go over and over. You wait here, we'll go and have a chat with him, see if he knows anything about it. Uh, excuse me, sir, that kind of thing, is it? Right, mate, this gentleman's alleging you've damaged his taxi, OK? You don't have to say anything unless you wish to do so, boy. <laughs> that will be he's under arrest, then, will it? <laughs> oh, OK. So you'll be given an evidence. Do you want to say anything? Do you want to say anything about it? You're under arrest for criminal damage. You're under arrest for criminal damage. Excuse me. No, you're under excuse arrest. Me. You're under arrest. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're under damage. Oh, oh. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm passing a f***ing back door with my girlfriend. Not anymore. <laughs> Excuse me, I've been to a dinner. That's my girlfriend. Not anymore, it's not. That's it, mate. That's it now. You're next, she's ours, and we're having your house and your car. <laughs> Karina. And we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit of a laugh about a disability you might have. What's the problem now? Hang on, hang on. You've oh, been what, told what, why you're under arrest. No, so far. Hang on, wait. How many Whoa. times have we got to be told? You're right. deaf. He's deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible and sarky at the same time. This man has gone from walking along the road on the way back from a restaurant with his girlfriend to lying face down in the back of a black ride in 11 seconds. Well, you see, uh, this looks perfectly harmless, perfectly innocuous. It's, uh, 
somebody's opened up uh, a little chip, uh, chip shop here. You come and you buy your chips. Now, for someone like me, it's no problem at all. I'll just come up. Six pennies of chips, please. Thank you very much. Bye. And imagine... Imagine a smaller person, maybe a Welsh people who are notoriously diminutive in stature, and they come up here, or an elderly person, desperate for chips, and they try and scale it. You see, they try and scale the wall, or down they go, and all sorts of abrasions, all sorts of cuts, uh, and at the end of the day, a rather serious accident here on the pavement. And all because somebody wanted six pennies of uh, fries. Very dangerous. <laughs> Let's go back to where we were now. Where were we? We were in Cardiff. We were in Cardiff on the film I made uh, with the police. Uh, and I went out and, and let's have a little bit. Let's, let's have another look at me. This is another of my favourites, right? Here's Jeffrey. Jeffrey the Shrinking Jeffrey, Man. Where do you live, Jeffrey? <laughs> where do you live? Where do you live, Jeff? What's the chances of Jeff knowing where he lives? <laughs> You've shocked him by reminding him that his name's Jeffrey. Where'd you live, Jeff? Bloody freezing, mate. All right, we're going to take you over his splot, is it? <coughs> Jeffrey apparently lives in splots. <laughs> which is quite a fashionable address if you're Welsh. <laughs> Come on, then. We're going to take you over the roof, all right? Which number? Uh, which, which number? number? Which number? Come on, your wife's waiting for you. <laughs> I don't think his wife's waiting. <laughs> I'm not saying he hasn't got a wife, I'm just saying I don't think she's waiting for him. I don't think she's sitting there in a lovely cosy with the fire burning and the grandfather clock going, saying to the kiddies, Daddy Jeffrey will be home soon. <laughs> Oh, and we'll be the happiest family in Splot. <laughs> also, despite what this man is about to... I don't think Jeffrey's got any medical knowledge. Do you need an ambulance? <laughs> Jeffrey. He's been speeding, isn't he? Do you need an ambulance? How do you feel? No, I think you're mixing him up with a diagnostic surgeon from Cardiff University. <laughs> it's an easy mistake to make. Cool. Come on, then. Can you stand up? Come oh, mate, here you come. Just wait. Now, a wonderful thing you're going to find about Jeffrey, because, in fact, he's got one of the strangest kind of illnesses, phenomena, that you can imagine. Because he is the incredible shrinking man. Look, he's obviously... Just, look, there's his legs, there's his... And there's his... Uh, he's obviously easily as tall as either of those two, right? And when they first put him up, he's fine, but... Definitely. Maybe it's just me, but he shrinks. <laughs> Look, now they turn him and he's even smaller. <laughs> here's, a, here's a fella that was, when I saw this blow, I was just, wow, wow. Suddenly my respect for the police just went through the roof. Seriously. For what? No, these guys are in the front line, right? And you imagine this, yeah? You imagine there's some woman out there and she's got a little bottle of acid in her bag, huh? Yeah, it's quieted you down, isn't it? <laughs> man went up to another man and headbutted him for what appeared to be no apparent reason. When I arrested him, placed him into the van, this girl came up to me, gave me some verbals, telling me to uh, more or less go away in very colourful language. And then what happened? When I told her that I wasn't going to let him go, she shoved Kerry sauce in my face. <laughs> oh, for Kerry sauce. <laughs> but she didn't even have the sense to wipe off before we came and spoke to him. <laughs> there he is, PC curry sauce. Uh, here's, the, here's the police again, uh, dealing with, uh, in a wonderful diplomatic way, with an incident where there's a hint that someone might be involved in, in something gone amiss. Who did? Who did? No, we never. Cut a boy by now. Just crushed all my camera. This, this. Have a chat. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. What's what's happening here? This shot. This gentleman, who's a taxi driver and therefore an unimpeachable witness, <laughs> has claimed that he doesn't like you. 
So you're next. We're standing there waiting for the taxi. I'm you under arrest for criminal damage. Excuse me. Women in Cardiff, when they go out with their boyfriends, don't they have, turn around and have a look at the number on the door? <laughs> Uh, you drive in, right? I'll just sit here with my eyes closed. <laughs> and have no idea where I live. So it's okay. annoying because I want to be with you. He's going to Cardiff Central Police Station where we're going to be interviewed. No, I can't take you. Okay. Now, I can't take you there. You can only go to the police station if you've been arrested. <laughs> If you hang around here for, I don't know, five or ten minutes, <laughs> chances are you'll wind up there. And just before you go any further, I want to show you my favourite man, right? Who's a little man who's nothing to do with this story at all. He's been out, he's a bit of a farmer, I think he's a farmer or an agricultural worker. <laughs> uh, so you'd think he'd be used to livestock, but in the middle of Cardiff, after he's had a few pints, the last thing he expects to see is a horse. <laughs> Look. Are you with him? No. Why? Because you're not. <laughs> He's my favourite. <laughs> Absolutely my favourite. Excuse me, when I ordered this, I was quite specific what I wanted. <laughs> To be held down and arrested by half a dozen policemen, but I did put on the request form that I didn't want handcuffs. <laughs> I don't want the handcuffs. Now, please stop wasting my time. Just want to say something though about the people of Cardiff. They're wonderful people. They're uh, it's the home of the Astetford. And they're a musical people, and no matter what's happening, no matter what uproar is going on, and what kind of police nitwittery is happening all around them, <laughs> they're always ready for a song and a dance. They're always ready to do a little Al Jolson Busby Barkley number, and if you watch very carefully, you'll just see the beginning of the chorus line start to enter here now. So imagine you're down there, maybe it's Brian Connolly doing Jolson live on stage. Just, here we go. I'll shoot the station, all right? Yeah, da 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 No, actually, there's a lady who owns a toffee shop in Glamorgan who's still at liberty. Right, let's go and get her then, shall we? Right, I can't hang about. I've got to make a move because I've got to go and see somebody... Well, in Cardiff, but I ain't going to bother, actually. I'll see you later, though. Cheers. In Bed With Me Dinner returns next Saturday. Prepare yourself for a comedy assault after the break on Paramount as we spend half an hour in the convivial atmosphere of the comedy store. TV? Yes. I think you show it's crap. Excuse me. You're under the oh, yeah. oh, oh, Wait, 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 wait. wait. That's mean... my show. Not anymore, it isn't. <laughs> did you with the handcuffs, sir? Uh, I don't believe I did, no. No handcuffs. Oh, rubbish. I can't get on without him. <laughs> Licensed victors, and they will they will neglect other things just to get screed. And here's the other thing I've got, right? 
A lot of my mates come round, right? I'll tell you, Aidan Quinn comes round a lot. Sean Penn, Brad Pitt. They come round and I like to have them, but they always eat my popcorn. I get a big bag of popcorn, put a film on, and they eat my popcorn. So what I've done, I've, got, I've done a deal with a little firm, and I've had this made, right? Look. And this is Bobby's popcorn. <laughs> no mistake there. So Brad Pitt will go, hey, man, I want to eat some... Oh, better not, it's Bobby's. <laughs> If he spoke like that. Oh, there you go. That's it. Uh, oh, here's the other thing from my microwave. Fantastic thing I've discovered. Look, you get a picture of him, right? There he is. See him? Britain's uh, leading uh, Formula One racing. No. So, uh, after the break, Bob Mills in bed with me dinner. Right. I'll tell you where I've been. I went out last night. Right? I went out with my mate Gaza, right? Uh, me and him went out and we went out. He said, come out and have something to eat and something to drink. So we went out and then we had something to eat, right? And then we went out to drink. Uh, and then we went out and had something to eat. And then we went out and had some more drinks. <laughs> and then we went out and had something to eat. And then we had four more drinks. And I think we went out and had something to eat. And then we did something a bit weird because then we went and had something more to eat somewhere else. And I said we were supposed to go out and have a drink before we went and had something else to eat. So then we had to have two drinks to make up for the drink that we'd never had in the first place. Anyway, I've got some stuff to show you. Uh, what is it? I can't read my own writing. Yeah. There are a lot of people, you know, a lot of people now in television, uh, they use, like, oh, they have a, this is absolutely true, they have a big camera with the words on the front, but professionals, real professionals, like me and Bob Greaves, people like that, <laughs> we just, like, get your gas bill, write some stuff down it, and then you can read it as you're going along. That's easy. It's much, much, much the better way to do it, I always think. Uh, what have I got? In? Oh, here, yeah, look. You've got these. Right? Look at this. Fantastic. I discovered these, right? Uh, made by uh, HP. Look. Healthy beans. That's fa no, that's fantastic. They're not like normal beans. Don't you go thinking that they've just got some normal baked beans and written the word healthy on the front of the tin, because they haven't. They're healthy beans. Like that. So if I have people come round, I'll give them them, right? Unless I have Welsh people coming, in which case I'll just give them them. I don't mind. <laughs> they don't taste them, they just eat them far end of meals. So <laughs> what else have I got in here? Oh, I've got some screed. Look at that. Great big bag of screed. There must be five pound of screed in there. Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do later. Right, not now, seriously, but later, we'll get together, we'll have a couple of snowballs, because I'm a bugger for a snowball, and I'll dish out the screed. Look at it, look. Beautiful, beautiful stuff, screed. Uh, I'll go down the store down Wharf Road, and I'll get, like, five pounds, and I'll eat that. Just, just with a spoon, you can just eat it. If I'm not mad on it. I just eat it, I can take it or leave it. But some people, they will put screed before anything. But especially, like, a lot of people who run pubs, right? They get mad for screed. It's very big with 